Howdy, today we're going to be looking at the Avis Plus a kind of milestone disk detainer lock and we're going to try it with a front tensioning lock. Pick. We've got nine disks in here plus two butterfly disks. Top and bottom, here's what the stack looks like. Nothing you haven't seen before from this view if you've been looking at any of the videos looking inside disk detainer locks. You got nine functional disks as a set of butterfly disk at the top and bottom. We'll look at what makes that special in a sec. You can look at the key as well to get a sense of how far you're going to have to turn these disks. This is a look at the disks and you can see that all of them, except for the butterfly disks, have false gates. So that means when you're setting it, that's what it looks like when it is set. All the big true gates are all lined up. That's the win-win part. But as you go through, you'll see that you have some shallower gates showing up and some no gate areas showing up as you turn the key. Uh, and so that keeps the sidebar from falling into that slot and letting you turn the actuator of the lock. Again, so far so good, so familiar if you've been checking out disk detainer locks. So to open this one with front tension, uh, what you're going to be doing again is tension off that front butterfly disk. That's our strategy here. And then swap to tension off one of the zero cut disks and open up. So what do we know about this that makes people kind of go, ooh, this is a tougher disk detainer lock. Well, it's those butterfly disks. And we're going to talk about those in a second. And they're called that because these are supposed to be shaped like little butterfly wings. So what's the deal with these things? Well, take a look at this sleeve. What you're looking at here is the limiter. That's the bump that stops the discs from going all the way around uh, as the discs hit the gate or the limiter. So in the butterfly disc, the edge that hits the limiter means that the gate in the disc gets passed. So when the disc is in the gate, here and the sidebar drops in. I'm going to show you here where the limiter actually kicks in and why that's an issue. So that's this is the idea of the limiter inside the sleeve and what happens with the butterfly disc is there's a bit of a gap between where the limit edge is on the disc and when it's in the gate. So there's this gap and if it actually turns up to the limiter as you see here it'll push the sidebar into the wall of the lock that rather than letting it drop in because it's not in a gate. And usually when you want to tension off something in a front tension disc, like here we have a zero cut disc, pretend that's in the front, uh, it, you can both tension on it because it jams up against the limiter, but it doesn't shove the sidebar anywhere except into the gate. So it can be set at the same time that it is being tensioned off, and then you can use that to set other discs. Fantastic. But our strategy is we're just going to jam on that uh, butterfly disc right at the top of our lock and use it for tensioning and do something we've been showing in the disc container tutorial series here. You can check out that playlist. Uh, and we'll come back and, and set it back into the gate after we have the other bit set. Because as you can see, that's what it looks like. It's just great for tensioning from at the front. Let's take a look a little bit at the disks again to see how we can think about setting them into their true gates. Okay, we've got nine of these guys. And this is just part of building a mental model of what's happening inside. So what we're seeing here is the line is acting as the limiter line, but it's also in line with the um, gates for the disks. So you can see that the big fat gates, true gates, are in different positions relative to the the line where it's set and relative to where it starts when everything's set clockwise. So you gotta move them counterclockwise to get them to get into the gates. You can see here, however, how much you need to move them back. There's a bit of an animation to show that. In some cases, like that four, very little five, very little six is in a true gate, so it doesn't have to go anywhere. Seven, meanwhile, has to actually go through to the third gate, two false and a true, and then the butterfly disc barely moves at all. So we can take a look at that just one more time so you'll get a sense of 
the rotation, how little, how much. And it's nice to see that so that when you then the key matches up with this too. So that when you're trying it, you can see, am I twirling this number four disc way, way too far considering how little it's supposed to go relative to the gate? So it can help put your feeling together, your kinesthetic sense together with your knowledge of the inside. So again, here, coming back to picking, this is again the sidebar. What happens when you kind of refund it with the butterfly disc? You can't see that reefing because right this second, uh, that gap is showing up a bit. But here's an example of pretend that we've got tension on that butterfly disc, and now we're going to be able to feel the movement when we move the other discs against the sidebar that is jammed at the bottom there into the lock. With that little extra edge being held up, that's the tensioning. Again, any disc detainer lock is doing that so far in the series. Uh, you can feel it better when you're moving the disc back from clockwise to counterclockwise that uh, the space is unique to go through. So that's what we'd be doing here is trying to move this disc back a bit and be able to feel what kind of gait it was rubbing across the sidebar. That's the idea. So from counterclockwise to clockwise. Again, we've seen this in the Gerda lock in particular, the same kind of feel over the false gates. This one has two false gates and a true gate. And then what we're seeing here is the need to angle the peck up to get that reefing in. And so a great background videos to take a look at. I++ did a super one explaining how this um, sidebar jamming in into the lock helps to feel the gate. Uh, Inden Herja also did a great one on front tensioning and getting that sidebar feel, and so did Albert Liebel. Highly recommended. Now, for one more technique to take a look at to make progress with this particular lock is to use spacers. Type Roll has created some printouts of great spacers for progressive disking, if you will, disc detainer locks. Uh, this one is a four spacer. You can also chop the height of the spacer. Uh, down so that you can create twos and one spacers. There's an example using the four spacer. I put in disc one and two here. And two is a fixed disc, so I like to have that in the barrel for tensioning. That's kind of important. And pop in this four spacer. In this case, don't need a the metal spacer above or below. The disc takes up all that room. I didn't find that to be the case with the ones and twos, but uh, your mileage may vary. So here we go, just popping the seven right on top of that. And now we go back to using a spacer, eight on top of that. And then the butterfly disc will go in next. When I get up to um, the butterfly disc, I don't put the spinner on, I'll put the key in just to make sure that with the spacer in there, everything's tamped down sufficiently and lined up correctly that it still works. When you see the that little hole on the left, you can see the shackle there drop away. But just to confirm that, there's the shackle banging down into the tray of the vise. So we know that this should work as expected because the key is working as expected. Next thing we'll do is put the spinner in. It's not a gauge spinner, it's not needed, it's just giving you some room you need to put in for the tensioner. Leaf spring to hold everything down, and here we go, we're going to test it out. So we align up the discs with the spacer in there, we put the pick in, tension off that butterfly disc, angle it so that we can really feel that sidebar for the disc 8 and disc 7 that we're testing on. 8 is just a small rotation, so just playing around to get the angle. Try to get the click off 8. Yep, 7 is a couple of gates to get in. So again, want to feel that really clearly. And then you can see scooting right through the pack. That's going right through the spacer until we find the next real disc, which is 3 having to re-angle again to try to feel that. 
And it's going to take a couple of times to get that three feel. I think you have it. Um, forgot to set two there, or check that two was set, which is another fixed disc. So going back in to try to feel the gate sweep in three again. And then what will happen is once that's set, try to hold tension on two, which is the, the zero cut disc, and then rotate back on the tension tip. No, tried it, didn't work. So got to check three again. There, something clicked. And yep, there we go. So that was that rotate back, holding tension on two, rotating back on nine to get the butterfly disc moved into its proper gate and open. So let's review some tips here that we've got so far are check the key so you can get a sense of what the pattern is for the rotation and definitely where the zero cuts are for tensioning after um, using the front disc. Take a look at the discs. Get a sense of what the mental model is inside the lock so that you can match up feeling with what you know is happening on those discs. Make sure that you're angling your tensioner so you can feel the sidebar or you won't be feeling the discs as you rotate. Four, think about using spacers if you feel like progressive disking will help you get a feel for that lock. And finally, check the disc state bonus tip. We've looked at this in the uh, Gerda example. But you can do that here as well. So if you, the open is not happening, you think everything's right, just peel off the discs one at a time to see what their state is and how far or close they are to what you feel. Okay, let's give it a go. Full stack now, as usual. Make sure that the, the key is doing what it's supposed to do and to demonstrate this is a lock that opens and closes with the key. Rotate all those discs clockwise. You don't have to do this, but I find it useful. Set the tensioner. Go ahead and start moving on the discs. This is eight. Trying again to get the angle right now. You can see how moving it back and forth and up and down just to get the feel. Once that's kind of set, if I don't get it, I just stop and reset the, the pick. It makes that much of a difference. That was eight and one. We've got three. Moving on seven, six is the zero cut, just checking, yep, that's definitely banged up against the limiter. D5, little click back. D4, wham, right into the gate. D3, let's see if we have as much of a hassle this time. Got the feel when you get it. One, two, not quite. It is just, you can really feel the big gate compared to the false gates. I think that's it. Hold it two on tension. And I'm going to let you experiment to see why I didn't have to touch disc one on that to get that open. All right, now that we've got it open, let's take a look at it to make sure it truly does have all the discs in it. And they are the discs you expect. Okay, we're going to go through this a little more quickly. Oh, yes, right, these are the bits, the ball bearings and, and the screw that when you want to use this over the lock so that you can't just undo this cap to get into the lock. Um, you open the shackle and you put those ball bearings and screw in and that keeps that cap from coming off like so. But as this is a practice lock, don't need to do that. Okay, so in a second, let's look at this. You can see all the discs as they're peeling off are set up against the sidebar, which makes sense because the disc won't, or the lock won't open without that. Okay, let's pick up the pace a bit here. This really does help again when you're practicing, if you're in doubt about what's going on inside the lock, is just peel off those discs one at a time to see where they are relative to the sidebar. There we go, actuator falls out, ball bearings come out that hold the shackle in place. There we have, again, another view. Yes, these discs all have false gates except for the butterfly discs. And they are so smooth. As I say, tr give, the, give this thing a try with a pick of any sort without trying to angle into the sidebar. And after any other lock you will have tried to pick before this, Let's, let's just put together 
this is uh, it, it's there's it's super smooth anyway getting the ball bearings into this lock setting aside like any padlock really this is the fun part and the actuator is separate from the sleeve I've marked it so that I can remember when putting this together which way the actuator is supposed to go down when it turns clockwise so drop it in there and mark on the right because when you look at it it's actually like what different shape on each side so got it set yep so it's lined up now drop it in the thin way to let the ball bearings roll around turn it that puts the ball bearings into the shackle that'll hold the shackle in place yeah there it is it's not dropping out now and then you can stick in the sidebar and that's all happy happy and then guess what well you know it's just putting the thing back together again and by the time if you're at all like me you've had to test this many times all together uh, you'll have had the opportunity to see those discs many many times and put them in and out so that's that's about it and i uh, hope you enjoyed it get some use out of this if this is fun uh, and if it helped you please let me know if you have questions just shout thanks for watching